Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to continue working on this swing grid component, and we're going to implement a flexible state system so that different applications can set different lists of possible states that each cell can have, and you can assign states to each cell. So we're going to put most of that in place. There's going to be some work to do in further videos, but we're going to get the basic bare bones of it in place in this video. So to start with, we want somewhere to store a list of states. Let's have a private, actually I'm gonna make that left margin private now, now that I look at it. Must have forgotten to do that previously. Let's have a private map of, now we can use either a string or an integer or something else to refer to each state. You could use a string if you like, it might be a little bit less efficient. I'm gonna use an integer here. And this map is going to store buffered images. And what this is, is it's this is going to be the list of possible states. Each different state is going to be represented by an image. And then we're going to separately store the actual states for each cell. So let's set that equal to a new hash map. And add the import for that stuff. Of course, I've got to add a variable name here. I'm just going to call it states map. Okay, then I can add the imports. So this is a list of possible states, basically, or a map, technically, of possible states. Separately to that, we're gonna have a private integer 2D array, which is gonna be the actual state for each and every cell, so the state that it's currently in at the moment. Now let's add a function that allows us to add a new state, because we want applications using this component to be able to do that flexibly. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here, just get rid of that extra space, and I'm going to create a public void add state. And for the moment, let's just make this uh, accept an int integer, we'll call it state. That's kind of name or reference or idea of the state. And we'll have a color, let's call this background. And we want to make this add an entry into that map. So first let's create a buffered image. So buffered image bi equals new buffered image and the size of this should be cell size minus one because that's how big the actual area that we're painting on for each of our cells actually is. And the height like the width should also be cell size minus one. And the type of this Let's just format that because so I've got a bracket in the wrong place now. The type of it will make buffered image dot type int RGB. So that's going to pack all the color information into a single integer. We've also got ARGB, which we could use if we want a transparency channel, an alpha channel, but we just we don't really need that here. So I'm going to go with just the RGB type. And then from that, to draw on it, we can get a graphics just by doing bi.createGraphics. So that will give us a graphics 2D, which we can just call G here. And then we can do g.dispose just to get rid of it when we've finished with it. And in between, we just want to draw a rectangle on this buffered image, which I also need to spell correctly. Let's say g.fillRect, and we want to draw at 0, 0, uh, how big is it? Well, cell size minus one. So let's put that there and there. And this, I don't think we need. So let's get rid of that. Ah, oh, yeah, because I've got the wrong version of fill ret. Okay, so we're just going to fill a ret. We're just going to fill the whole uh, square, little square image here with color. We need to set the color as well. So g dot set color and set that to the background color. So this will create a little image, uh, which is gonna be, it depends what we specify here for the color. And we're gonna start by adding one default state. So in the constructor, let's say here, add state zero and color dot, let's try maybe orange. Doesn't matter too much at this stage as long as we can see it. So that's going to be the default state 
of every cell. Now we need to actually initialize our grid of actual cell states. So this is just a list of possible cell states we've got here. We want to initialize a list of actual cell states with uh, just the number zero representing the default state for the moment. So to do that, let's go down here near the bottom maybe and have a private void init cells or init, init grid states or init cell states or something like that. And we need to know how big this is going to be. So int grid width, int grid height. And I want to say here, if states is not equal to null, so if it's not null, if it's already been set, set to something, then we just want to return. But if it is null, we'll carry on and we'll say states equals new integer and it's going to have grid height rows and grid width columns. And now what we also want to do here is give each of these a default value of zero. Or I suppose I could have just made this a 2D array of uh, ints instead of integer. Uh, but uh, this will also work perfectly well. So I could initialize this with a, a nested loop, but instead I think I'll just use a stream API as an alternative. You could use a nested loop, of course, if you want. Let's do arrays.stream. So we turn this array into a stream by passing states to it. And what's it going to be a stream of? Well, it's a 2D array. So every item in the array is actually going to be, it's actually going to be a row. Let's loop over those rows with a for each. And then we get, uh, we can use a, a lambda expression here. The argument to this lambda expression will be one row at a time of this 2D array. And what we can do with that is use arrays.fill to just fill it in with zeros. So what do we want to fill? We want to fill A. The That's the argument for each is passing to us here. And we want to make it zero. So that should fill the entire 2D array with zeros. Now, where do we call this? I don't really like doing this. It feels a bit hacky, but the best place to call it I think is really going to be paint. We want something that happens after the first paint has occurred. It doesn't matter if we call it after that because this is just going to return once this once this bit's been done. So I just need to put after we've got the grid width and grid height, I need to say init cells or init grid or whatever you've called it and put in there grid width and grid height. So grid height. Okay, so that should initialize our cells. And we've also got our list of states, which at the moment only has one default state. Now we can use all that stuff where we're actually drawing the cell to actually draw what will ultimately be in this case, a little orange square. So firstly, I need to get the name or reference of the state. That's, that's going to be an integer. Let's just call it state and set that equal to states and we use here grid x now that's wrong grid y and grid x because this is in row column order and that should hopefully be zero because we just set all of these to zero so now we can use that as an index into our map to get the buffered image that we want to use for this cell in its current state so let's say buffered image bi equals states map dot get state and finally we can just draw it so I can say here g2 dot draw image okay where do we want to draw it we don't need all of these um, we don't need this ma massive long form of draw image I don't think so we want to draw image and we want to draw it at x let's try x and y that's not quite right, but it'll do. And we can just draw the whole thing. So I don't think we need to specify a width or a height, but it has got this um, image observer argument, which we're not going to use. So I'll just set that to null. And let's just run this and see what it does at the moment. 
At the moment it's not doing anything indicating that I've forgotten something. What did I actually forget? I think I forgot to call. No, I did call add state. Let's just check that we've got zero coming out here for this key. So if I do a system dial dot print line and print state, I really have no clue what I did wrong at the moment. And what's it say? It says zero, so that's fine. And if we just move this down a little bit and I output the buffered image, let's see if that is non-null. It's actually null, so we haven't actually got a buffered image. And now I know what I forgot and it's something really stupid. You may have been looking at the video kind of silently screaming at me, but when I did this add state, yes, I created a little image, but I didn't do anything with it. What I need to do is say states map dot put and I need to add this integer key and the buffered image and now we've got a map full of little images only one image at the moment so now finally if I run this ah that looks good except if we look closely and I'm going to try to use zoom here I don't know if it'll actually work on this video recording system if we zoom in there's no left or top margin and in fact the bottom margin and the right margin they're too thick what we need to do to fix that is really simple when we draw the image we just need to indent it by one pixel to the right and one pixel towards the bottom and then we'll be able to see our left and top margin and now we've got this really nice grid which uh, they're all orangey yellow at the moment but what we can do next is um, we can try adding some different colors in here so that some cells are different colors. And we're also going to look at adding little icons to these. We're going to add icons just using characters. You could, of course, use images that you've drawn or whatever, but we're just going to be drawing uh, letters, symbols in the, middles, uh, in the middle of some of these cells. And don't forget, if you go to my website, caveaprogramming.com, I've got a massive course on Java Swing. And also for only a little more than $20 a month at the moment anyway, you can subscribe to my site on an ongoing monthly basis. You can actually pay monthly. It's a bit more than $20 a month. And you, then you have access for all of my courses for as long as you want them. And you can cancel anytime you like. So do have a look at that. Uh, also, there are many free courses on here uh, as well. Some you can learn, for example, C++ or Java for free from scratch if you want. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.